Mr. President, uh, I recently heard from a teacher in Seattle by the name of Lion Terry. And over the course of his 17-year career, he taught second, third, and fourth grade. And what Mr. Terry, a great, uh, what makes Mr. Terry a great teacher is the way he engages with his students. He starts the morning by playing songs on his guitar. He keeps his students laughing with jokes. And every day, he tries to create an environment where kids want to come to school. Last year, he was named Washington State Teacher of the Year for 2015. This week, Mr. Terry has been following our debate here on the Senate floor, and he was truly hoping we would pass this bill because he says the current law doesn't reflect the work he and his fellow teachers at Lawton Elementary School are doing every day. So, Mr. President, let me echo the words of uh, the chairman of our committee and the majority leader. I'm proud today that the Senate passed a bill to fix No Child Left Behind for teachers like Mr. Terry, for parents, for communities, and most importantly, for our students. A bill to continue our mission of delivering on the promise of providing every child with the best our nation can provide. I've been very proud to partner with Chairman Alexander on the Every Child Achieves Act, and I do want to thank him tremendously for his successful bipartisan process that he had. I want to thank all of our co colleagues on the HELP Committee for their work and dedication in moving this bill forward. And of course, I want to thank the staff as well, both my staff and the staff of Se Senator Alexander, for all of their hard work. They have worked many, many, many long days and late nights and weekends to get us to this to po point today. I will submit a full list of names later, but there are some staffers in particular I wanted to recognize. On Senator Alexander's staff, I want to acknowledge and thank his staff director, David Clary, uh, as well as Lindsay Seideman, Peter Oppenheim, and Lindsay Fryer. They've done an excellent job. And on my so staff, I want to acknowledge and thank my staff director, Evan Schatz, and my education policy director, Sarah Bolton, for their outstanding leadership, as well as Amanda Beaumont, Leanne Hotek, Ali Kimmel, Aisa Canchola, Ariel Evans, Jake Cornett, Leslie Clitheroe, Aurora Steinley, Helen Hare, and Mary Robbins. Thank you for all of your hard work on this really important bill. I, too, want to thank our floor staff. On our side, Gary Myrick and Tim Mitchell and Tricia Engel and all of our floor sta staff, Republican and Democrat, for their help and guidance. We couldn't be here without you. Uh, Mr. President, I do want to take a step back for a moment to look at the work we've done so far and the work that remains even beyond the vote we had today. Of course, nearly everyone agrees that No Child Left Behind is badly broken. That goes almost without saying. I've heard it from so many parents and teachers, administrators in Washington State, Democrats, Republicans, independents. They are sick and tired of the broken law that's in front of us. They want Congress to fix it, and they don't want us to wait any longer. That is why I'm so proud that our bill, the Every Child Achieves Act, is a strong step in the right direction to finally f fix the broken, not ch uh, broken No Child Left Behind law and make sure all of our students have access to a high-quality public education. For one, our bill addresses high-stakes testing. The current law overemphasizes test scores to measure how students are doing in school. Our bill will give flexibility to states to use multiple measures, not just test scores, to determine how well a school is performing. These steps will reduce the pressure on students and teachers and parents so they can focus on less on test prep and more on learning. Our bill eliminates the one-size-fits-all provisions of No Child Left Behind that have been so damaging for our schools and our districts. Instead, it allows communities and parents and teachers to work together to improve their schools and ensure every child gets a well-rounded education. Our bill maintains federal protections to help students graduate from high school, college, and career ready. You know, when the Education Com Committee debated the bill, I was very proud to work on a bipartisan amendment with Senator Isaacson to ex expand and improve on early learning programs. You know, as a former preschool teacher, I've seen the kind of transformation early learning can inspire in a child. So I'm very glad that this bill will help us expand access to high quality early childhood education so more kids can start kindergarten ready to learn. 
Mr. President, I've also seen fixing the current law as a multi-stage process. At the beginning of this year, as the Chairman said, uh, he released his discussion draft for reauthorizing ESEA, and after that, the two of us had a conversation about a path of how we could move forward. Instead of going down a partisan path and letting politics become our guide, we agreed to work together to find common ground. And we agreed to do everything we could to put our students first, to put our families and our communities we represent first, to break through the gridlock and dysfunction that too often paralyzes this Congress, and to chart a path to fix a broken law. I, again, want to really commend my partner, Chairman Alexander, for sticking to that approach. Uh, he is a role model for all of us, and I really appreciate all he is doing. The result is our Every Child Achieves Act. It wasn't the bill I would have written on my own. I know it wasn't the bill he would have written on his own, but it is what is called a compromise. It is a strong bill that all sides can be proud of. After we negotiated our bipartisan compromise in April, we passed our bill out of committee with a unanimous vote, 12 Republicans, 10 Democrats. So I want to thank all of our HELP committee members who worked to improve and strengthen this bill in committee, and all the members, Democrat and Republican, on our committee and off, who wrote the dozens of amendments we included in our substitute and manager's packages, and all of those who brought their ideas to the floor and debated and voted on them over the past week on the Senate floor. So, Mr. President, today I'm very proud that we have passed this bill with a strong bipartisan vote. So we know our work is not yet done. Now we begin the next phase. And as Chairman Alexander has said throughout our floor debate, ultimately we need a bill that President Obama will sign into law. And though this bill has taken a number of steps in the right direction, there are still a few more we need to do before our work is done. We have important work to do in conference to reach an agreement on a final bill. The President has made it very clear to us he can only sign a bill that strengthens the accountability measures in Every Child Achieves Act and addresses inequality, where some schools are unable to offer the same opportunities as others. I agree that's a must, and I know that I will continue to work hard alongside our ranking member, Bobby Scott, from the House and the administration to make accountability and resource uh, a priority in conference. The only way forward is for strong, bipartisan work we've seen in the Senate to continue in that process. Now, I will say that, unfortunately, so far, House Republicans chose a partisan approach to reauthorize this bill. Their bill doesn't represent one end, and ours represents another, where we have to meet in the middle. Their bill re really represents an unacceptable partisan approach and path, and ours represents a carefully negotiated compromise with just a few important steps to go. So I hope that in conference, our friends in the House, the House Republicans, will be ready to join a House and Senate Democrats, Senate Republicans, the administration, as we work to get this done in a way that works for all of our students and families. By working together, I am confident we can get this bill over the finish line and fix this broken law for our teachers, and in my home state and across the country and help make sure all our students have a quality education. You know, delivering on that promise of a good education for all students will pay off for generations to come. This is one of the best investments in our country we can make to ensure that we have broad-based and long-term economic growth. Because, as we all know, when students have the chance to learn, we strengthen our future workforce. We know that our country grows stronger, and we empower the next generation of Americans to lead the world. We will help our economy grow from the middle out, not just the top down, and that's something we've known for a long time. 50 years ago, in what would be just months before signing the original Elementary and Secondary Education Act into law, President Johnson said, when it comes to education, quote, Nothing matters more for the future of our country. That is still true today. The future of our country hinges on our students' ability to one day lead the world. So I'm looking forward to continued work on this Every Child Achieves Act for our students, for our parents, for our teachers, and the future of our country. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.